school and nothing really makes me happier. Well, maybe a cup of coffee as I get ready for back to school. A little bit of housekeeping. If you're on your phone, turn it sideways for a bigger picture. If you're at your computer, go full screen. If you're on your TV, enjoy. So many different ways to catch up in this digital world and connect. It makes me happy. Be sure to introduce yourself. Put in your tulip icon if you are a part of the tulip people. Let us know where you're from and then interact with each other. Get to know each other. If you're a first timer, let us know so that we can welcome you because it's kind of fun to get to know everyone and this is the opportunity for collaboration, connection, a little bit of education, and a lot of fun. You know, all that important stuff. Today, we're talking about the creative entrepreneur and how to increase your income. Yeah, how to make more money. It was funny, mm, I'm gonna make that a little bit shorter. It's a little bit tall, guessed wrong. So cut down again, dip it in alum again, and set it back in again, and I like it there. That's a good height for that. So yes, even after all these years, sometimes I guess the wrong height, and I have to go back and cut it a second time, but I'd rather cut it a second time than to have it be too short. A shout out, I have a post-it note on my table, you maybe saw that, and I just want to do a shout out quickly before we move on. I signed certificates today, put certificates in the mail, so we have basic certificates going out to Tamara and Abby. So congratulations, Tamara. Congratulations, Abby. Your certificate is on the way. You have been successful in your completion of the basic photo design online program. And we're pretty proud of you. Then I have two people who also are receiving their advanced certificate and their FDI certified floral designer certificate. So they've completed basic advanced. They have done the full certification. So a shout out and congratulations to Yoko and Jake. Congratulations. So that's exciting. Those, those little times where I sit at the desk and sign the certificates and send them off to you make me happy. And oftentimes I'll go back and I'll look at your student dashboard because I want to look at your picture so that I know who I'm signing it to. It just kind of brings it all full circle to me from that first day when you introduced yourself and says, hi, I'm, and we read and look to see what your dreams and goals are. And then at the end, when I sign off on your certificate and send it on the way, it's like empty nest syndrome a little bit because I'm like, oh my gosh. But then I always hope that you'll come back and see us for another class sometime. And I certainly hope that you always stay in touch. That's for sure. So as we were getting started though, we were talking about increasing income. And you know, you can always do the traditional things, the tried and true. You know, you'll hear people talk about, well, I increase my sales by always pushing for an add-on sale. So if I have a customer and they buy this, I try to sell them that as well. And that's true, an add-on sale, that can work. Okay. This rose is cappuccino. It's one of my favorite colors. It's kind of this brownish, mauve-ish, depends on the light can almost turn to pink. Isn't that beautiful? And mixed with the blue gives it such a nice ambiance. And I'm using the hydrangea as basically an armature to support everything. Just kind of feeding it down in, letting it sit there. Then you can also say, oh, I make more money because I buy smart. And that's a big deal shopping wisely, spending your money wisely, finding the best value. Maybe you do pop-ups. That's something a lot of graduates have done. I've done that. And it's a fun way to do a little jump start on money. Maybe you set yourself up for website sales or flash sales or subscriptions. Maybe you 
advertise yourself on social media. Maybe you don't do paid advertising, but you promote yourself on YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, so many different things out there, and maybe you're doing that. Yeah. When I had my flower shop, those were all ways that I used to increase my sales. I loved add-on sales. I figure if somebody came in to buy one flower, I'd try to sell them two flowers because it doubled my income. And so silly little things. Or if they bought something for a new baby arrangement, I'd try to sell them a stuffed animal. And I loved buying smart. I had um, certain philosophies I used when I would go to the gift mart to buy that I always thought made me smarter and richer. Um, did it, who knows. We did pop-ups every holiday. If there was, um, let's say it's Valentine's Day, we had the flower shop, but then we would do a pop-up as well so that we had two places to sell flowers. So all of those things work, um, but you know that. You already know that. You, that's no surprise. Those are the tried and true that everybody tells you. Oh, make sure you go on for the add on sale. Oh, have you tried a pop up? But today I want to look beyond the expected. We're going to base this on the assumption that you already are going for the tried and true. You already do add-on sales. You already buy smart. You already are on social media. So what else is there? And that's what we're going to talk about today. I have three ways that I had to use this word, but I can guarantee you three ways that would guarantee you you would make more money. And then we'll cover those three. And if you make it to the end with me, we'll see. I have a fourth bonus technique that um, I find really worked well for me over the years. So three ways that I promise you will help you make more money and then a fourth bonus if you hang in with me. So one thing I wanted to do was just start designing and get you some things. So I did hydrangea, I did cappuccino rose, and then this is, oh, I can't remember the name. Um, but I know where to look because I am a smart florist and I put it in my phone <laughs> and that way I know exactly what it is. I should have known this. It's called purple love grass. So love grass is all one word and I thought, isn't that kind of a funny name, but it's love grass and I love it. So I should have remembered that. I shouldn't have had to look it up. but. Thank goodness for the computers we keep in our pockets because they allow us to know everything even when we don't know anything. It allows us to be smart. While well, I grab a couple other things, Michelle, anything going on in your world? Oh my gosh, so there are so many tulips, I can't keep up with the names, but we have a couple questions and some very busy tulips. Valerie did 12 centerpieces for an 85th birthday party. Whoa. And Sherry did six of them for the Jamaican Jerk Festival this weekend. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? Oh, you know, and I should tell you all, we have a full house again today. Pretty exciting. I love it when we're getting ready for back to school and everybody starts returning, vacation starts slowing down, and we all get back into the mode of flower school. So obviously, hi, I'm Leanne. I'm with you today. Ben. Directly across from me is Ricky, who is making sure that tech stays live. Make sure that you can see me. She'll say, oh, Leanne, your face is glaring. Or, gee, Leanne, would you please scooch that over? Uh, and so she keeps us on the straight and narrow. Then off to this side is teacher Michelle. And you heard her voice there a moment ago. And Congratulations to you busy tulips. That just makes me happy. And if you see somebody saying they're busy, give them a pat on the back, show them some love, because that's what we all want. Because that's one of the ways we can make more money is get busier, hello. Then off this direction, we have teacher Carolyn with us, and she's in the studio live, just like last week. Uh, and so she's following along, making sure that 
watching for questions. And then just ahead of me on this side is Assistant Hitomi. So she has been with us now for a few weeks. So you've gotten to hear that name. And she'll be with us quite a bit on the Wednesday Lives to make sure that she's watching the questions and what's going on, voicing it out as well, and interacting with you. Then virtually, we have Susie on YouTube, Caledonia on Facebook, and David probably trolling on both sides would be my guess. So, like I said, full house. Isn't that great? I love that. So, he told me what's going on in your world. I think everyone wants to know what your necklace is made out of. It's been a popular question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, guys, we're talking flowers. <laughs> Now, this necklace is one of my most favorites. Um, it was given to me by one of our graduates, Elizabeth. So, Elizabeth, if you're out there, your necklace. It's been many, many years ago, um, and it's wire. So, when we teach you in class to do a wire ring or a wire cuff, oh, we have a new one coming up in the Flower Lovers Club. It'll be there in a couple of weeks. You're gonna love it. But when we've taught you wire work, this is a wire work necklace. Now, she did not make it. It is um, commercially made, but we're all kind of copying it because we love the way it lays. And, and it's very comfortable because it's lightweight wire. So that makes it kind of nice too. So thanks for asking and thank you, Elizabeth. I love my necklace. Carolyn, what's going on in your Well, I'd like to give a shout out to Anna. She's joining us from Australia, and she has always watched us on replay, but has never joined us live until today. Okay, so Anna, live in Australia. What time and day is it there? Are you a day ahead of us? But So what time and what day is it? Because... Susie, who is always with us on YouTube, she's actually going to the other side of the world this fall. And so we've been trying to figure out, well, when does she go on live? Because we don't know what time it is. So we have a fat first timer. So everybody shout out to Anna, was it correct? Correct. Okay, so give a lot of love to Anna. And Anna, if you would type in there, what time and day is it there right now so that we can figure out it's Thursday at 8.13 in the morning. Okay, Susie, there's your answer. <laughs> On Wednesday at 3 o'clock here, it's Thursday at 8.13 a.m. It's going to be an early live for you. Whoa, that's going to be harder. Ooh, especially when you're vacationing. We may have to do it without you. You may have to actually take a real live vacation. Um, Teacher Michelle, what do you got? Well, <clears throat> Catherine had a question. She noticed that you left the leaves, or some of the leaves, on your hydrangea. Shouldn't you remove them all? Ah, good question. It depends on what I'm doing. I always remove some. Um, this one has them all gone. This one has two left. It sort of depends on how healthy I believe the plant is and how strong. Um, so I try to leave some if I think that it's going to last without dehydrating and sucking too much of the moisture out of the plant itself. And then if I feel like it's a healthy plant uh, or healthy bloom, ooh, I think I just about cut myself, we'll find out. Um, I leave some because I like the green. And I think it's kind of pretty, but got to kind of check that out. Okay. So now what I'm doing is extending my line. I'm going to pull this down a bit. There we go. So that I get a little visual value of going up to add drama and down to extend that movement. This is hanging amaranthus. And with the amaranthus, its leaves don't hold well at all. They get really kind of skanky. So those leaves I do remove. Um, so judgment call on a lot of things as to whether you leave them or not leave them. Uh, and a lot depends on what variety and then what it is I'm doing with it as to whether I do that. 
Then this one I'm going to bring it up a little higher because it'll visually connect to the roses so it brings that color all the way through. It gives me that little bit of elongation. So let's get started talking about making money. So I did a vase. That was just to get you going and let you know that yes, I am designing flowers. Uh, and to get us started, let's look at step one. Step one for increasing your money, raising more money to put in your pocket, is to increase your customer base. Hmm, yeah. Basically, if you have more customers, you're going to have more money. Common sense, but sometimes we forget that the easiest way is just to always look for more customers. So how do you find more customers? That's where, when I typed this up originally, I said, you know, you increase your money through focus and intention. And with getting more customers, you do it with intention. You really put your thought to it. How do I get more customers? And it can be making sure you're seen on social media, having a beautiful picture of your work, hashtag Portland florist, and letting people see that. Maybe it's having a website so that you are introducing them to who you are and what you are. Maybe it is getting involved with other businesses, networking. You know, all of those things can make a difference. For today, I thought, and I'm bringing them out so you can sort of see, I thought I was going to stick with some cubes today and square vases just for some continuity uh, and thinking about how you might design, how you might do things to make more money. But that part, the design, we'll get more to that in a second. But for a lot of what I'm thinking about, if you want to make more money, you need more customers. Okay? That sounds like common sense, but there's nothing that will make you more money faster than having more customers. So there has to be a time every single minute of the day that you're focused on the intention of getting another customer. So it may mean that you have to make sure you do a post every day that says, look at the cool flowers I got in today. Now it might be just a different picture of flowers you got yesterday, but they're still fresh and good. But you post it, and with a sign that says, fresh today at Portland Florist, so that they know. Um, and then every single customer that you have, every single customer that you have, not just once in a while, every customer you have, you want to get their name and their email and their phone number because you can start building a database of potential customers that then you can market to. You can send them an email that says, hey guys, I just got in the first of the year primroses, fresh today. And they get excited and they call you up and they say, I need some primroses. Or maybe you send them an email that says, first of the season, peonies are blooming, and they find out you're there. So reaching out on social and then reaching out in real life by collecting their information and then telling them that you exist and you have these and thanking them for their sale. Every time you do make a sale, let them know thank you. One of our graduates um, had a very, very wonderful technique I was impressed with. Uh, every time that they made a delivery, they made a point of taking a picture of the person holding the arrangement and smiling. It takes extra time. It's an investment. But they go, oh, let me get a picture and I'm going to send it to 
so-and-so who bought this for you. And the person tells her, geez. And then that photo is texted directly to the person who ordered. Most people don't do that. So do you think that person's gonna remember? Mm -hmm. Do you think they're gonna buy from you again? Mm -hmm. You know, all those things make it actually better. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of some leaf manipulation here just because I want it a little different. So a single U-glue dash on the back of the leaf, pulling it up and over. My mechanics are the same, hydrangea for armature, but this time I'm going low, low and steady. But you got there. Well, we have another first timer who usually watches us on YouTube, but this is their first time seeing us live. Cy is an ag teacher in Hughes Spring, Texas. Go Mustangs! And he <laughs> and his students watch us all the time. Oh, how fun. You know, I love it when I find out that ag teachers, hort teachers, floral teachers share us with their students because this is something new about me you might not know, but I started in floral because of my horticulture teacher in high school. So I have done floral since I was 16 years old and it was all thanks to Mr. Dave Lambert because he got me excited about flowers and if it weren't for that high school class who knows what I wouldn't be doing probably not standing here having fun with flowers each and every single day I mean how cool is this I win um, and so that truly is because of my high school teacher and I am grateful that I had that opportunity to get started so thank you for sharing us with your students I appreciate that and I'm assuming if you're in Texas, you were part of that whole homecoming chaos of flowers. Do you and your students make those great, big, huge, wonderful things? I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm just always amazed at um, the homecoming chrysanthemums and such that come out of Texas. And it's truly unique. You don't see that in most other places. But if you aren't aware of it, boy, it's pretty cool, pretty much fun. So I added a tuck of a leaf on the back side and then just brought it so that it kind of comes down to the front. If I decide I want to reposition it, I can pull it and just reposition like that. That's the beauty of a U-glue dash is you can change your mind. But what I've done, elongated with the hanging amaranthus and now I'm elongating with a leaf and then the other added bonus by putting the leaves in like this, it takes fewer flowers to make it look full and lush because all of a sudden you've got this break in here. So potential for making more money for just some little simple thing there, um, not a whole lot. This is a local grown spray rose, um, actually left over from last week, but it's been in the cooler. Generally the local grown roses don't hold this well, but since it was in the cooler, it's holding beautifully. So I thought I'd tuck that in there too, just like so. And maybe another. This one will be pretty, a little different color. Okay. So step one, you want to make more money, make more friends. <laughs> and I say make more friends, but meet more customers and tell them that you want their business. Tell them you would love to sell them flowers. Do it through networking, do it through social media, do it through connection, do it through adding added value by taking a photograph and sending that to them so that they can see what they sent. But do it with intention. Really focus on what it is you're trying to do and then conveying that message to them. And what you're trying to do is get more customers. And the only way you can get more customers is ask for more customers and ask them to buy flowers from you. And then say, thank you for buying flowers from you because now you've made more money. It's all very easy, or at least you need to make it look easy. I guess I shouldn't say that. It is not easy. Nothing is easy in business because if it was easy, everybody would already be doing it. So it does take work. It is hard. But 
A successful florist makes it look easy because people like to buy from people that make it look easy, like, I got this, not a problem. It's under control, no big deal. Then you run in the back, yard, back room and you go, ah, what am I gonna do? But in French, you're like, oh, sure, I can do that for you. It's so easy, because think about it. If you go to the ballet, you want to watch them fly across the stage gracefully. But if you go to the ballet and they're going, wonk, wonk, it's not really even fun to watch. You're like, ooh, ooh, that's not graceful. Well, same thing with flowers. If you watch somebody going, oh, throwing it and all over the floor, mm, where's the beauty in that? But if you watch them just carefully place it in, you think that person is a pro. So that's, you know, tip number one, get more customers, give them value, say thank you, and make it look easy. That one's pretty simple, but it's not. But you can do it. I know you can. Tip number two, whatever you do, stay focused. And by staying focused, it means focus on your products, focus on your style. One of the ways you can increase your profits is to limit your options and your ingredients. Because if you have to buy hundreds of different things, you're going to reduce profits because you're spending more money. Maybe you limit to where you only do vases that are cubes. That's all you do. And so then all you do is buy assortment of cubes. Now, bonus, cubes are really easy to deliver. Bonus points, so if it's easy to deliver, it costs you less to deliver it because you don't have to worry about it tipping over or how you're doing it or is there enough water. So limit your options. Maybe you don't want to do cubes for everything. And maybe what you do is primarily like subscriptions to a home or subscriptions to an office where you're just doing a cute little thing for a desk and every week you deliver something cute to the desk and you think, oh, well, wouldn't it be fun if every week you delivered it in glassware? So they got a Monday flower arrangement in a martini glass or a Monday arrangement to go on their desk in a wine glass or a champagne glass and the flowers would last till the end of the week and at the end of the week they dump it out, they wash it and then go get a martini. How cool is that? Or they go get a glass of wine. You know, I think that that could be a selling point and again, deliverability all you have to do is hit the restaurant supply store and buy one of those glassware crates and you just drop it in the crate and then you go with your crate and you deliver all of your glasses again an easy way they go wow a, mar a hydrangea martini how cool is that or maybe it's a mixture Maybe it's some spray roses. Like when Dairy Queen used to do the fun glasses for the trailblazers. Every week was a different trailblazer glass. Remember that? I can remember going to Dairy Queen to get my glass collectible. And if I missed it, I was heartbroken. Aren't we all like that? I mean, we, well, maybe you aren't. I am. If somebody gets me started that I have to collect something, then it becomes a mission to make sure I get all of them because I don't want to miss out on one. Remember, oh, you know, the other one that was kind of like that was um, Wheaties when they did the different sports people on, on it. On the boxes, yes. Yes, 
My father collected every single Wheaties box, and when he passed away, we're looking at all these boxes. What do we do with all these Wheaties boxes? But he had every single one, because that's what you do. And um, so in this case, maybe they get weekly flowers, and they tell you, well, I want mine always in a champagne glass. And then they end up with a collection of champagne glasses. And they can tell their friends, oh yes, um, I get my champagne glasses for free from my florist because they just come with my flowers. But they're not free, you're charging them. And they're winning, you know, which means you're winning, everybody's winning. So while I gather a couple more things here, what else is going on out there? Well, Rick posted that he is cutting from his own garden and selling things he's grown. He's supplementing with some roses, but he's really excited that what he grows, he's actually selling. You know, and that is somewhat limiting, which is absolutely fabulous and goes right along with this. Limit your options. I sell what I grow, and then you can enhance it with things, but if that's what you're known for, I sell what I grow, how cool is that? Direct from the farm, hand-picked, just for you, seasonal, local. All of a sudden you can use all these great buzzwords and you've got happy customers and you're making more money. Now I don't want to imply that it's free to grow flowers because it's a lot of work and it does cost money to get the seeds and to get the plants and to get it done. So it's certainly not going to be like they're cheap. It's that you have greater value to your customers and you've got more of the money staying in your pocket because you did that effort. So excellent, excellent way to go about it. I love that. And you know, that brings me to, you know, limiting your options, limiting your ingredients, which would be, you know, I only do local, I only do things I grow, I only do seasonal, whatever, but limiting the options and limiting the ingredients also makes you more exclusive and defines your unique style. And those things, again, can help lead to profitability, more money in your pocket. So when you start with intention, which is to get more customers, and then you focus your energies to narrow the offerings and the collections, you increase your profits. Now, some of you are in places where there's no way you could grow things. Maybe you live in the desert where it's too hot, too dry, whatever. You too can limit and focus. Um, limit to certain types of containers. Limit to, I only do foam free. Limit to, I only do whatever. But you make your plans and focus on doing that well. And then when somebody asks you for something different, the answer is no. Because that would reduce your profitability. And if you reduce your profitability, you reduce your opportunity for success. So while I grab a couple more things to fill my glasses, anything else going on out there? Nikki had a question for you. She said, I know you only ever worked in flowers. But what's the biggest change in the industry you've seen all these years? Hmm. There's been so many changes. Um, our industry is change and progress all the time. And that's exciting to me. And that's why I never get bored. Um, I can still say I love what I do and I do something I love every day with flowers. Now I will also say some days I'm not as excited as other days. Mondays especially are not my most favorite day because that's the day I do book work and stuff and I'm like, oh. But I do it on Monday and get it over with. And then I have the rest of the week to love my life. So changes. Probably 
one change that I see that's immense is availability of product. Because when I first started as a florist, you couldn't really even start as a florist unless you were married into the business or born into the business because it was a very limited industry with a small amount of product and so to be a newbie was almost impossible. So the fact that we have abundance of product available to us, that would probably be one thing that I see happening right now that makes me happy um, and allows us to to do more and be more for our customers. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to put in this. That's why I'm like, la, 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 la. Nothing is speaking to me. What do you want me to put in this one? You see what I have here. Somebody tell me what to put in there. Type it in there quickly because we got to keep moving. Um, I don't have all day. Uh, so then other changes would be the expansion of multi-tiered markets. So then you have the farmers, you have the mass markets, you have the traditional florist, you have web-based florists. All of these things have changed how people can receive flowers and provided much greater opportunity for employment and for entrepreneurship. So that would be a big one. Uh, and these two things have also made it possible you know, the internet has allowed us to reach more people, get more customers, increase our profits. They have allowed us to sell on that medium using both social media and a website to show people your styles and what you can do and to limit offerings but to reach more. So again, increased profitability. Um, and then I would say the latest change that has me thrilled to death is the fact, and it is a fact, that more people see flowers as a necessity than ever before. Other countries have been that way, but the U.S. is starting to embrace flowers as a necessity and not just a nicety, and they're recognizing the benefits of having flowers around them all the time, and that benefits us. So do we know what I should put in this? Anybody answer? Well, YouTube, it says thistle, um, and I see on Facebook, they all say roses. Pretty much rose, 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 but they don't specify, so I would throw out just a single garden rose floating. Whoa! Go big or go home. That's <laughs> true, and you know, okay, I'm, I'm in love with that idea, and then we will go on with some thistle, too. I will do thistle as well, but... Um, one of the concerns about flowers is that they don't last well sometimes. And people say, oh, but I want it to last. I want it to last. And the reality is, ah, i got to cut that down a little more. Um, if you float something, it's going to last so well because it doesn't have to work as hard to drink and it's got moisture even at its base. So it's going to hold better and it's going to give the illusion of super long lasting because it is long lasting. It's not really even an illusion, but it just makes it better than if I'm doing, going to do that, I would go one step further. Leanne, mm -hmm. is that a glass of rosé? <laughs> glass of rosé, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> that wine has a wonderful bouquet to it. I'll <laughs> stop. Oh, I love this. You know, this is why I like to have everybody in the studio with me, because they crack me up, and it just makes everything so good. Now, I've got very, very pliable willow. I'm making sure that it's pliable or it won't work. But if I was going to do something as simple like this, even though we all know a garden rose isn't an inexpensive bloom, it's a luxury bloom, but that doesn't mean the customer is going to realize that. And so they may go, oh, well, so I paid $99 for that, which we know it wasn't $99. But if you add a little bit of pizzazz to it, 
by just tying in a little bit of the willow or a grass around the bottom. Um, if you like ribbon, you could have used ribbon here, but enhancing it with just a little bit of organic material at the base all of a sudden ups the value slightly. And then again, you can deliver the rosé. They can enjoy it all week. Mmm, delightful. And they can swish it around, do the whole thing. And then Friday, pour themselves a glass of rosé. And they're going to remember you. And all week long, they're going to be looking forward to that. And you're going to be the one that was so special. And really all you did was limit their options. And then you win. How cool is that? You make more money. So we got number three yet and then bonus four. But first was increase your customer base. So get more people to buy flowers. Winner. Then limit the options so that you limit your investment and you can do it. If you are having to buy everything, you can't grow things, then make it a color palette of the week so that this week everything is in the pinks to blues and purples. Next week everything's in the autumn palette, but you're focusing your monies. And don't buy one of everything. Just make sure you have something that's linear, larkspur and lovegrass, something that is massive, hydrangeas, something that is a mass flower, which could be the scabiosa, the roses, something that's a filler flower, could be the lovegrass, even the jasmine kind of works as a filler flower. And as long as you have line, mass, form, and filler, form, you can make beautiful things, and it all works together. So, one and two, now you know those tips. Let's move things a little bit to the side here so that I can keep working. And let's talk about number three and find my materials. I think I will use the thistles just because they are so grand. This one is Echinops thistle. It's E-C-H-I-N-O-P-S, Echinops. Um, and it will dry and look just as beautiful. The leaves just get crispy, and so I usually remove these leaves. They're not necessary. As it does dry, the blue can change its intensity. Uh, and so then, as it's dried, if you just give it a little burst of color, a little airbrush of color on it, it gives it right back to that intensity of a fresh bloom, which is beautiful. So that's how you would use this and get value out of it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and strip down the rest of this. Uh, and even though it is a thistle, it's not real stickery, so I'm able to just run my hands down and get it. Some varieties are more stickery, so don't try this at home without testing it first. But this one is not real stickery, so I can just kind of give it a scroll down. What did you call those, Ricky? I called them forbidden lollipops because they look yummy. <laughs> I love it. Forbidden lollipops. That would be great. Ooh, this part is stickery. It is a forbidden lollipop. Don't bring this into the home with children. They would say, oh, mom, how could you do that to me? Yeah, they are pretty cool, though. So I could do that, and then I've got some luscious Minta roses, M-E-N-T-A, Minta. And we had these last week, and you can see they've opened out so beautifully. The colors look great together. So I've got Echinops and Minka. And maybe I'll do a little bit of the Calcinia, get this used up. Breaking it down. So the third way to increase your profits guaranteed because I promised you that these first three were absolute guarantees so if you have more customers you're going to make more money if you limit your offerings and really keep things focused you will make more money third is raise your prices I know that's a dirty word isn't it raise your prices charge more you know if you're sitting there going gosh I can't pay my bills at the end of the month Oh my gosh, I don't have anything left to buy shoes for my children. Oh shoot, I don't have any money left to buy dog food for the dog. 
um, you're not charging enough, period. And it really takes all three. You've got to get more customers. You've got to limit your expenses. And then you've got to charge more. And it can be as simple as just really doing the math. No cheating. No cheating at all, period. You've got to do the math. Figure out what these things are going to cost and charge appropriately. Don't give anything away. Make sure you are paid appropriately for what you are doing. And if you do that, then you can pay your bills at the end of the month. So actually calculate what it costs you to make something. Don't just guess. Look at that invoice. Look at what you paid and then price it accordingly. Now, in class, you've all done that with us. You've gone through, you've priced it out from wholesale to retail, and sometimes you get frustrated because you don't want to, and I make you do it anyway, because I know if you price it out in class every single day, you're starting to learn what the reality of pricing is, and you'll be better equipped when you go out into the workplace to price accurately and make a profit. So if it means you're raising prices, God bless you, raise your prices. When you're sitting there whining that you have too much business but you're not making any money, shame on you. Raise your prices. You may lose some customers because they liked when you sold things too cheaply. But if you're not making any money, you didn't want that customer anyway. So raise your prices, charge appropriately, Make sure you're still giving them value. Now, you may also raise prices in a little simpler fashion. It may not be that your math is wrong. It may be that you are charging correctly and your math is correct, but you still want to make more money. I've been there. You know, my pricing is correct, but I don't have enough money to do what I want to do. I want to make more money. I need to make more money. How can I make more money? I mean, you just kind of go back and forth. And sometimes it's as simple, and this sounds really weird, as simple as just adding 50 cents. And you're like, what? Yeah, it can be as simple as adding 50 cents. And credit for this idea goes to a friend of mine, Sue, who was a young woman, had a business, was making money, was profitable, had had this business for a lot of years, but was at that frustration mode of not making enough money. I'm paying my bills, I'm paying my help, but I'm just not making as much money as I feel like I should. I want to make more money. And she did the math and analyzed. And if she got more customers and did more orders, she would have to hire more help, which actually meant she would make less money. So defeats the purpose. So then it was like, well, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And finally she came to the conclusion if she just added 50 cents to every single order at the end of the week she'd have another $40. At the end of the month she'd have another $160. Now, maybe you want more money than that, so maybe you add a dollar to every order. So instead of selling it for $22.50, it's $23.50. Now, the customer's probably not going to say, oh, I can't do an extra dollar, because they didn't even know that you were adding a dollar. You just added a dollar, and Sue called that her smile fee. And she told her staff, I don't care if you're on the phone, if you're on the computer, if you are in person, you smile while you take that order and add a dollar because they're going to pay you for that smile. I loved that. 
How cool is that? Now, maybe you only do 10 orders a week, so that's $10. But that's $10 you wouldn't have had. And it's funny, once you make a little bit more money, things start just snowballing. And it will it'll be surprising to you how that $10 psychologically helped you in such a way that you were able to build your business even more simply by charging a dollar or charging 50 cents. So number three is to charge more. But it may not be just charge more, it may be charge differently charge in a way that allows you to bring in greater profit and it does work i can promise you that when i learned that technique from sue i tried it in my flower shop and it cracked me up because it worked and i'm just like i can't believe it that was so easy and no customer ever questioned why it was $23.50 instead of $22.50, or why it was $56 instead of $55. It just didn't even occur to them to question that because the price was the price. It just really didn't matter. And that's like the easiest thing in the world to just add a little bump there. Now, you do have to start with the math and getting your pricing right. So if your math is wrong, if you're not right pricing correctly, go back and look at your basic floral design class details because the pricing is all itemized out in there. Also in the advanced course, well, you know, all of our courses include pricing for profitability. Study it and commit yourself to it. Don't cheat because the only person you're cheating is yourself. And so that's kind of stupid. And I know you're not stupid, so don't do that. Then once you get that pricing down, then up it by a dollar. Up it by 50 cents. Now, you may be a wedding florist, and so upping a dollar is not going to do anything. So maybe it is that you raise your minimum from 2000 to 3000 Or maybe you raise my bouquets start at $200, and you just put a new higher minimum so that there's no wasted efforts on your part. Maybe you only do mixed arrangements. Maybe you do wine glasses of rosé. Well, then you might only add a dollar or 50 cents. Maybe you're a flower shop that specializes in arrangements delivered to the home and subscriptions and your average sale might be $50, then make that average sale $55. Other industries have done that for years, Leanne. Isn't it funny? I mean, and they do. It's like, this isn't new and different. It's just that florists are a little bit slower to pick up on it sometimes because, oh, I still didn't cut those short enough. Well, I'm not going to make you listen to me cut again. We'll get those short off camera because I don't want you to have to listen to that I'll go again but you can raise your prices and it's harmless and I'll be honest with you right now right now is the time to raise prices because everything is going up so your expenses are going up you know that so customers are used to seeing pricing go up so just raise it don't apologize don't question just Oh great, yes, we have beautiful mixed bouquets. It's $17.50. Oh yes, we have lovely roses. It's $99.95. And just spit it out there. Now is the time. If you wait, you're gonna miss this opportunity. Um, so definitely do it now. Go for it. Now, I told you if you stuck with me to the end, that we would even go with the fourth bonus. So I know some of you are still out there. I hope a few of you are out there. I hate to think I'm just talking to myself. Um, although sometimes I do that too, and that's okay. You know what, whatever. So before I go to the fourth bonus, any last minute questions that I should be dealing with? 
No, I asked what tip they shared, what tip you shared today did they think they could implement, and Cherie said limiting the options. Okay, so let's kind of review. I told you there's the basics, you know, buy smart, do a pop-up, do website sales, do flash sales, do subscriptions, make sure you're on social, make sure you're on YouTube, maybe you need to be on TikTok. When I had my store, I did all those things and it was really grand fun. We loved that store and each of those things did increase the profits a little bit. But I found over the years, yeah, you can shotgun all over like that, but if you really focus on one, Get more customers, period. Set your intentions on more customers. Then two, limit the options so that you can do it well and profitably. Don't end up just storing a hundred zillion vases or bolts of ribbon on the shelf. What good is that? That's money spent, not money kept and profits. And then third, raise those prices. Even if it's just a tiny little bit, raise those prices so that you make more money, so that you're happier, because if you're happier, you're gonna do a better job. Number four, and this one is somewhat counterintuitive, but number four is buy more expensive blooms. I know that sounds odd, doesn't it? But if you buy blooms that are more expensive, it immediately adds a touch of luxury to your work, people are impressed. They're like, oh wow, I got my flowers and I got orchids in my flowers. I got an orchid, I tell you, it's an orchid. How cool is that? And if you buy more expensive flowers, your arrangements automatically look more expensive. There's value and it's easier to make things that look fabulous when you have fabulous flowers. And, I mean, there's all these ands. Um, when you put in a flower that costs more, it costs you the same amount of effort to put that in there, but you made more money because it was a more expensive bloom. So you place two of those in, it takes you just as much time as if I had done a scabiosa or a bachelor button, but all of a sudden I get to do something that has more money for the same amount of time. So you have the same effort, you get greater perceived value, you get a higher return into your pocket, and you didn't work any harder. You know, you could say, oh, but I could buy three carnations instead of the one cymbidium. Yeah, but, so now you have to place three flowers in there, so you've got more work, and it doesn't have the same value. All of a sudden, it's a win-win for everybody. The customer gets a greater value arrangement. They feel luxurious because they got something so cool. You made more money because you used an expensive blossom The fourth way, I think, is one of the most fun ways to do it, because we all like to work with cool, exotic flowers. So if you're limiting options to where you're making more money, and if you've got customers, so you're making more money, and you're pricing accurately, so you make more money, when you do that little extra boost of buying a few luxury blooms, exotic blossoms, expensive blooms, it could just push you over the edge in that profitability mode that you're craving, that allows you to do what you love successfully. Now in the classroom, we try to work with all different types of flowers so you can see how they work and what they do. In the online course, I encourage you to work with all different kinds of flowers so that you really see how they interact and which ones make you happy. And then in course, we'll teach you how to do all of these things. You already know that if you've been to flower school. If not, come join us. But for now, I think it's time 
to dump out our flowers and go for a glass of wine or rosé. Uh, but we'll take pictures of all of this so that you can see it tomorrow on the Facebook Tulip page, the private group. We'll get them posted there. Then um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'll get them spread out over all the other social channels. So if you wanted to see something a little more up close to see what it looked like, Ricky will get some great photographs. We'll get them posted. You'll be able to see it. And hopefully, if you know somebody else who should be doing these things to make more money as a florist, to do things more successfully as a florist, tag them, share this out to them, let them watch it on replay. And if you need a reminder someday, and if you're feeling sorry for yourself because you're not making enough money, maybe you need to bookmark this one so that you go back and remind yourself. Making more money is easy, very easy, but it takes focus and it takes intention, but it's worth it. I promise you, and a word I don't use, I guarantee you it's going to work. So I'll see you next time. Get out there and do something you love. Mm -hmm.